this video, we discuss learning outcome number two, which is about the difference between biased and unbiased estimators. And first of all, I want you to know that this is just an introduction to biased and unbiased estimators. We're going to get into this in a lot more detail when we study the sampling distributions in chapter seven. Uh, but, but here's the, the gist of it. An estimator is just a statistic and the whole goal with a statistic is to use it to infer or estimate the value of some population parameter. Remember when we talked about samples or statistics being from samples and parameters being from populations? That's exactly what we're talking about here. So we want that statistic to actually estimate the value of the parameter. Now, biased estimators are values of the sample statistic that do not center around the corresponding population parameter. When I say do not center, what I mean is if we were to look at the entire population and then create a sample of a certain size, so we randomly select, let's just say 100 values um, to have something concrete to work with. So we randomly select 100 values and then we calculate a sample statistic and then we put those values back into the population and we select 100 more and we calculate the sample statistic. And we do this over and over and over again. Um, as we do that over and over and over again, we're creating a list of data values which consist of those sample statistics. We want those sample statistics to um, have a mean equal to the true value of the population parameter. Um, but if, it, if the mean of the sample statistics all of those that we were collecting as we created multiple samples and calculated sample statistics every time. If the mean of the sample statistics is not equal to the true value of the corresponding population parameter, we say that the estimator isn't doing a very good job estimating. So we say it's a biased estimator. Um, that sample standard deviation S turns out to be a biased estimator of that population standard deviation sigma. Now, an unbiased estimator actually estimates what we intend to, it, for it to estimate. Um, here, the values of the sample statistic actually center around the corresponding population parameter. So if we keep creating samples that all have the same size, and then we keep calculating sample statistics, and then we look at the mean of those sample statistics, the mean of the sample statistics is um, will we'll center, if we were to do it infinitely many times, um, it would give us exactly um, the value of the corresponding population parameter. Um, rather than tending to overestimate it or tending to us underestimate it, the sample statistic would tend to uh, be a good estimate of the true value of the population parameter. Surprisingly, um, that sample standard deviation is a biased estimator of the population standard deviation. But when we square it, it becomes an unbiased estimator. The squared sample standard deviation, which we know to be the sample variance, that's an unbiased estimator of the population variance. So, so here's our, our, an example. Um, it's, it's just talking about the same ideas, but I wanted to give you this visual on the right hand side of the screen. So we've got our uh, samples uh, or population standard deviation right here. That's our target. The sample standard deviation underestimates it. See these targets? You see how it's, it's like somebody was, was trying to aim for this uh, population stan standard deviation and they're off, but they're not just off, they're consistently off. These are um, graphics that represent biased estimators because they're not getting towards the target. They're consistently away from that target. Um, and you know, you can be consistently away from that target and still centering on a value, just not centering on the value that we're interested in. Or you can um, have a little bit more uh, variation like we have in the second graph, but it's still not centering on the value, that targeted value itself. Um, there are more details here in this little paragraph at the bottom of the page. Oops, I did not intend to make my, my little window that much bigger. <laughs> it says, if you collect samples of the same size from the population and you compute that sample standard deviation every time, and then you look at all of those sample standard deviations and you compute their mean, 
the, the mean of those sample standard deviations will turn out to be consistently less than the population standard deviation. So it's systematically underestimating the value of the population standard deviation. And that's a problem. We don't want that. Um, so that makes it a biased estimator. Unbiased estimators actually give you that targeted value. So the sample uh, variance is an unbiased estimator. I want to make this little window smaller again. There we go. The sample variance, the variance is an unbiased and estimator. It tends toward it. So look at the, these pictures on the right. Um, that uh, population variance is our target. We're trying to get to that. The sample variance is always going to be near it. And if you were to take um, a number of samples from the population and all of those samples would have the same size and you were to calculate the sample variance for each of those samples and then you were to find the mean of all of those sample variances. You'd average them, even though Mr. Triola doesn't like us to use the word average, but you find the mean of that sample variance or all of those different sample variances, guess what? The mean of those sample variances is actually the population variance. Um, so that makes the sample variance an unbiased estimator. Um, it can be unbiased um, and have little variation like this top one, or it can be unbiased and have more variation like the bottom one. But either way, you can see that if you were to in some way take a, an average or a mean of those values, the mean would be right on target. That's what we mean when we talk about um, unbiased estimators. And again, we're gonna talk about more about this um, in chapter seven when we study sampling distributions. So this is just the summary of what we said on the last two pages. The sample uh, standard deviation is a biased estimator of the population standard deviation. And the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the population variance. Now you may have noticed at those formulas that the sample standard deviation has an n minus one in the denominator and the sample variance has an n minus one in the denominator as well but when we're looking at the population variance and the population uh, standard deviation we don't use the population minus one we use the entire population we take the differences between the particular values in our data set and the mean those are deviations, we square them, we add them together, and then we divide by the size of the population, not the size of the population minus one, when we're computing this population variance, and then we take the square root of that if we want the population standard deviation. Um, but look at those formulas again. When we're looking at the sample formulas, we don't have that sample size um, in the denominator. We've got the sample size minus one. Now, what I'm about to say um, is related to this, these ideas of bias and unbiased, although I will admit that, that this is not probably an adequate justification for, for why the n minus 1 actually leads um, to a better estimate. Let me, let, me put this, let, let me put this slide up and then we'll talk about it. So you might say, why are we dividing by n minus 1 rather than just n? rather than just using the uh, sample size in the denominator. Why is it always one less than the sample size? And the, the best reason I can give you is that when you have a data set with n values, there are only n minus one values that can be assigned without constraint. So let's say you're inviting five people to your house and you've got five seats at your dinner table. Maybe you're having a dinner party. Well, if, if you put one of your friends in the first seat and another friend in the second seat and another friend in the third and a fourth friend in the fourth seat, well, you were able to assign four of the five values, but that last friend, like there's only one seat left. Um, so there are um, N minus one values that can be assigned without constraint, but there's always one that's left over that you're kind of stuck with and it has to be the last one or, it, or not, it's not that it has to be the last one, but since it is the last one, um, there's, there's no choice, it can't be, it, it like has to be assigned last because it's the last one. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that very well, but I hope you get the idea. Um, with a given mean, 
well, with a given sample, we can use any of the numbers on our list for the first n minus one values. But then the, the last value will be automatically determined because it's the only one left. But what I always think of when I think of this, um, it's related to this idea of degrees of freedom, which we're gonna talk about later this semester as well, is, you know, uh, sports. <laughs> sports in elementary school or in middle school or it looks like this is like some kind of intramural sporting event. Uh, nobody likes to be picked last. It's just like that. You've got all these people and they're standing around and you're picking teams and you're picking this guy for this team and this guy for this team and this guy for this team. And then guess what? There's like, eventually there's one guy standing there and the person who is choosing the teams has no choice. That person is on the last team. Like, that feels really bad. Nobody does like, nobody likes to be picked last. Um, Data values don't care if they're picked last, um, but my point is uh, that there are n minus one of them that can be chosen, and you're kind of stuck with the last one. Um, just like being picked last in uh, intramural sports or in dodgeball in elementary school or something like that. Now, it's not 100% clear why this n minus one leads to this result, but let's look at the results on the next page. This is related to bias and unbiased estimators. When we include that n minus 1 in the denominator for our formula for sample variances, the sample variances will tend to center around the value of the population variance. So somehow, including that n minus 1, which accounts for um, the number of data values that we could actually choose, by putting that in the denominator rather than putting the sample size in the denominator, when we take the mean of all those sample variances um, that are um, found by creating a bunch of samples of the same size, taking those from the population and calculating a variance, uh, creating another sample of the same size, calculating a variance, and then keep creating another sample of the same size and calculating a variance. And then we uh, take the mean of all those, so we average them, right? Um, if we have that n minus one in the denominator for that formula, those sample variances will tend to center around the value of the population variance, or in other words, including the n minus one makes that, that sample, uh, deep, uh, sample variance, the uh, sample standard deviation squared, an unbiased estimator. The fact that the n minus one is there makes it unbiased. And I'm just telling you that this is true. I haven't explained why the n minus one leads to an unbiased estimator, but it's related to the fact that um, if you have a sample with n values in it, you can choose the first n minus one freely, but then you're kind of stuck with the last one. Um, so keeping that n minus one makes the variance, the sample variance an unbiased estimator. If we used n instead, the sample variances would tend to underestimate the value of the population variance. Um, so that's it for our discussion of biased and unbiased estimators. Remember, sample variance is an unbiased estimator. It targets the true value of the population variance. And sample standard deviation is a biased estimator. It doesn't target the true value of the population standard deviation. It consistently um, gives you the wrong value. Or I wouldn't say consistently, it systematically gives you the wrong value.